There are three kinds of literature in the history of American to contemporary period. The first kind is drama symbolico. It has three examples in the presentation, namely Tanikalang Ginto or Golden Chain by Juan Abad, Hindi Ako Patay or I Am Not Dead by Juan Matapang Cruz in 1902, and Kahapon Ngayon at Bukas by Aurelio Tolentino in 1903. It is an allegorical drama and was called seditious, which means causing a rebel by the American government in the first decade. This drama made the Filipinos defiantly broke the law that made most of these plays banned and playwrights in prison, including Tolentino. It was said that it was to inculcate a spirit of hatred and enmity against the American people and the government of the U.S. in the Philippines and to conspire together for the secret organization of the armed forces. The second one is a modern Filipina. It is the first English play written in 1915 by Elias Tellejo and Jesus Araulio. In it, a young woman speaks her mind frankly and intelligently and plans her future quite independently, then decides to accept a suitor who uses an old trick. He falls out of a tree and plays on her sympathy to win her over. She is in contrast to a conservative and dependent Philippine. And last but not the least, the third one is the vaudeville. It is a multi collection of slapstick, songs, dances, acrobatics, comedy skits, chorus girls, magic acts, and stand up comic acts. It originated from France was another form of theater which the Americans introduced that became popular in the Philippines during the 1902. Vaudeville's attraction was more than simply a series of entertaining sketches. It was symbolic of the cultural diversity of early 20th century America. A vaudeville was originally a comedy without psychological or moral intentions based on a comical situation, a dramatic composition or light poetry interspersed with songs or ballet. Architecture, New Urban Designs Was widely a classic architecture for government, edifices, and integrated parks and lawns to make the city attractive, by making its building impressive and places more inviting for a leisure and urban life. So, let's define first the urban design. So, it is the collaborative and multidisciplinary process of shaping the physical setting of life. Architecture, new urban design. It is a neoclassical architecture for government facilities. So, ito yung mga government facilities na ginagamita ng neoclassic katulad ng museum post office at iba pang government facilities. Plan ng new urban design yung mga building na ginagawa nila para mas makilala yung building na yun at mas laling gumanda at naging impressive. Para din mas madami pumunta sa mga building nila na ginagawa. So, example natin is kunyari lang is ang Manila. So, ginagamitan nila ng, ng magandang building or ginagamitan nila na magandang design yung isang building para mas lalong naging fame or malala yung isang city. So, kunyari, yung Manila nga, yung National Museum is ginamitan nila ng magandang design or yung ibang pang building para mas lalong makalala yung Manila. So, example of this is Legislative Building, National Art Gallery, and Post Office. So, the architect is Thomas Mapua, Juan Arellano, Andres Luna de San Pedro, and Antonio Toledo. So, first, Thomas Mapua. And guys, I have a trivia. Thomas Mapua was a Filipino architect, educator, businessman from the Philippines. And he was the founder the, and the first president of the Mapua Institute of Technology with civil engineering. So, he also the spreadheaded of many government projects including the Philippine General Hospital, Nursing Home. So, he 
also designed the US Center Post Office in Mitamanila. And the second one is Juan Arellano. He was a Filipino architect that's known for Manila's Metropolitan Center. So, Andreas Luna de San Pedro is a Filipino architect and he was a first built air conditioner. So, tribute tayo ulit kay siya yung gumawa ng ano, yung kauna-unahang may air condition na building sa buong Pilipina. I mean, in the Philippines. Lastly, trivia guys is architect Antonio Toledo. So, he was the architect responsible for the design of the current Manila City Hall. So, which exhibit a uh, neoclassic design. So, National Art Museum or National Museum of Fine Arts. So, isa si Juan M. Aureliana sa nag-contribute ng design dun sa building na yun, guys. Trivia ulit tayo, guys. Post Office or Philippine Postal Corporation um, Isa sa mga architect na gumawa or nag-contribute ng design is ni Juan M. Arellano and Tomas Mabo How did American colonization influence Philippine art? Portraits were still favored by the public officials usually depicting them in dignified poses from the American colonization brought high influence to the major Filipino art forms, paintings, sculptures, and architectures. Fabian de la Rosa was the first Filipino dean of the University of the Philippines, School of Fine Arts, and also was the first painter in the 20th century. He was noted for his portraits and landscapes as they appeared realistic. He is known for his naturalist painting, characterized by restraint and formality in brushwork, choice of somber colors, and subject matter. Don Fabian de la Rosa y Sueto was a Filipino painter who was the uncle and mentor to the Philippines national artist in painting Fernando Amorzolo and to his brother Pablo. He is regarded as a master of genre in Philippine art. Why is Fabian de la Rosa called master of genre? De La Rosa in his own way also contributed to this identity assertion by being one of the first Filipino artists to paint into the canvas the everyday life of Filipinos. In doing so, he dignified the Filipino, putting on the pedestal this distinct Filipino experience. Planting Rice 1921 In 1904, De La Rosa won his first gold medal for planting rice in the St. Louis Exposition. Four years later, in 1908, when the University of the Philippines School of Fine Arts was founded, De La Rosa received a scholarship from the German Alsager factory to study in Europe as a scholar. He attended the Academy de Julien in Paris and the Academia de Bella Arte de San Fernando in Madrid. The school attended by Juan Luna, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, and later on, Fernando Morsolo. El Condiman El Condiman is a unique composition by Fabian de la Rosa made in 1930. It is also known as Tertulia. This realistic painting pictures a musical gathering or song concert in the afternoon hours. It is an interior scene set in the spacious and carpeted sala of an illustrado house. Numerous human figures are in formal wear but the focus of the painting is a female singer standing beside a piano as she sings a condiment to the accompaniment of a male pianist. The audience is engrossed in the music they are listening to. The details of the painting show that those pictures belong to the period's elite. Fernando Amorzolo, 1972 national artist known for his dramatic paintings that capture the warm glow of the Philippine sunlight. Siya ay isang pintor na makatanawin at lalawan sa kanayunan ng Pilipinas sa multibong mga nagkawanan niya sa pamamagitan ng natural at backlightning techniques. Isa sa mga gawa niya na hanggang ngayon ay kinala ay ang Hinebra na logo. Kabilang din ang kanyang pinakakilalang mga pampipinta ang dalagang Pilipina, mga tanawin ng kanyang katutubong Pilipinas, mga larawan, at mga eksena sa laban ng World War II. The current Hinebra San Miguel label, widely known as Marta Demonio, 
The thick Saint Michael, the Archangel, conquering Satan in the heavenly conflict portrayed in the Book of Revelations as the War in Heaven. This was designed in 1917 and was created by Fernando Amorsolo. Amorsolo's food, Irineo Miralda, Toribio Herrera, Cesar Pinamunfura, and Dominador Castaneda. Irineo Miranda kinilam bilang isang watercolorist, illustrator, at cartoonist. Pinsan siyang tinawag na Dean of Philippines Cartoons. Toribio Herrera ay isang Philippine-Asian modern and contemporary na pintor. Ang kanyang mga tunyag na gawa ay puno, kopya de Starium, Lavendera at Communion. Si Cesar Benaventura ay isang Pilipinong pintor na kilala sa kanyang sariling tansa para sa kanyang makulay na makula at makapal na ipinipinta ng mga paglalaraw ng mga taunay at mga tao ng Pilipinas. Inilalaraw niya ang mga masasama na nag-aararaw ng mga pilipin o mga isdang pagpalit na kasiglagan na tumutuon sa mga tahimik na eksena ng pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay sa tahanan at agrari. Isa sa mga sikat niyang gawa ay Barrio Sin, Riverside, Seascape, at iba pa. Si Dominador Hilario Castadena ay ipinanganak sa Pilipinas noong 1904. Si Castaneda ay kilala sa kanyang mga landscape painting na nagpapakita ng kanyang sariling malikhaing deskarte, ang antipolo, lipa, kubo, dapdap, at iba pang gawa na ay kapansin-pansin sa kanilang kapalikiran. Victorio Edades, National Artist Influenced by United States Modern Art Movement. Si Victorio Edades ay isang pinto ng Pilipinas. Siya ang pinunang ng revisionaryo ng labing tatlong sumalungat sa kanilang mga klasikal na katapan sa isang mainit na debate tungkol sa kalikasan at kahalagaan ng sini. Siya ay pinangala ng isang ambasyador alagad ng sini noong 1972. Si Edadis ay pinangala ng ama ng makabagong pagpipinta ng Pilipinas. Ang mga kulay ni Edadis ay madilim at malungkot na may paksa o mga tema na naglalarawan sa mga manggagawa, manggagawa sa industriya o pangkalahatang publiko sa lahat ng kanilang dumi at bawis. What is the meaning behind the builders by Victorio Edades? In his campaign for modernism, this is one of his paintings that shows his enhanced knowledge and skill in modern art. This artwork emphasized linear and structural composition above other pictorial elements, conveying the essence of men engaged in labor through the contortion of the bodies. Guillermo Estrada Trentino, July 24, 1890-1976, was a Filipino classical sculpture who received the National Artist for the Visual Arts Award in 1973. Guillermo Trentino was born in Malolos, Bulacan. He is known as the father of Philippine arts, having sculpted the UP Oblation and then the Bonibasho Monument in Caloacan City. The design of this assignment was chosen in competition conducted by sculptor Vicente Francisco as well as architect Andres Luna, San Pedro, and Tomas Mapua. The UP Oblation, the popular statue of the University of the Philippines. When you say UP, the first things that pops into your mind would be that fully naked guy statue with his arm open wide. It's the UP Oblation by Guillermo Tolentino, commissioned in 1935 by the University President Rafael Palma and originally erected in Ermita at the UP Manila campus, was sculptured by Guillermo Tolentino in honor of the State University's 40th anniversary. Bonifacio Monument Tolentino's work on the Bonifacio Monument, which is now a key landmark in Caloacan City, earned him national acclaim. The Andres Bonifacio Monument commemorates the Philippines Revolution, which was led by Andres Bonifacio, who reeled his soldiers to rise up against Spanish colonial oppression on August 23, 
1896. He issued a call to arms against Spanish authority, which became known as the Cry of Pugadlawi. Around the base of the monument are life-size statues of Katipunan members, commanded by Bonifacio. His winning monument design included an obelisk with a freedom bird sitting above it. Napoleon Abueba, Napoleon Billy Veleso Abueba, January 26, 1930, February 16, 2018, was born in Tagbilaran, Bohol. Napoleon was known as the father of modern Philippine sculpture, hardwood, adobe, metal, stainless steel, cement, marble, bronze, iron, alabaster, coral, and brass were among the materials he used in his sculptures. He was the first Filipino artist to mount a one-man exhibit at the Philippine Center in New York in 1980. Japanese Occupation 1941-1945 The Japanese occupation of the Philippines occurred between 1942 and 1945. When Imperial Japan occupied the Commonwealth of the Philippines during World War II, the invasion of the Philippines started on December 8, 1941, 10 hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Kalibaki, Kapisanan sa Paglilingkod ng Bagong Pilipinas Sponsored Art Competitions Greater East Asia, Co-Prosperity Sphere is a propaganda movement that sought to create a pan-Asian identity that rejected Western traditions. Slogans like Asia for Asia made its way to the public through posters, ephemera, comics, and Japanese-sponsored publications such as Shinseki, Liwaiwai, and Tribune. Amarsolo Paintings Harvest Team 1942 and Rice Planting 1942 continued to flourish because his arts showed little or no indication of war's atrocities which is continued to be favored. This is the example of Omar Solo paintings. Evocative of semblance of peace, idealized work in the countryside and promoted values of docile industriousness. Sa kabukiran, is Silvia La Torre's hit song written in Tagalog in the 1940s by the acclaimed composer Levi Celerio, National Artist for Music and Literature awarded in 1997. Its lyrics was originally Cebuano by Manuel Velez and was later translated into Tagalog by Levi Celerio and which was popularized by Silvia La Torre in 1997. His Excellency George B. Vargas, the chairman of the Philippine Executive Commission in 1943, was a Filipino lawyer, admitted to the bar in 1914, and in 1918, he served as a legislative secretary for Sergio Osmeña. Independence this year, said His Excellency Premier Tojo, 1943. Premier Tojo was also known as Hideki Tojo, was the Prime Minister of Japan from October 1941 to July 1944. It was also in this year that the 1943 Constitution was established. Paintings The number one is genre painting. Genre painting is a style of depicting scenes from ordinary life, especially domestic situations. The second one is showed indigenous and pre-colonial traditions. Indigenous traditions are maintained traditions of an early culture that is associated with the first inhabitants of a, of a given region. Pre-colonial traditions refer to the 500-year-long traditions before the Spanish colonized the Philippines. Third is portraits of an ethnolo ethnologita groups by Crispin Lopez's study of an Aita in 1943. That remained neutral focusing on the aesthetic qualities of ruin and disaster. After 1945, works which depicted the horrors of war, such as Josda Lorenzo's atrocities in Paco and Dominador Castañeda's Doom Family, were painted. Contemporary. Many cultural projects 
ensued during the helm of the Marxists. Under martial law, Marcus envisioned a new society or bagong lipunan. Number one, the rebirth of a long-lost civilization. After the Second World War, the world and our country were destroyed and our former president Ferdinand Marcos built a new civilization because our country was destroyed by the war. Number two, aspiration to modernization and development. Former President Ferdinand Marcos, with the help of former President Imelda Marcos, built a projects and infrastructures for Filipinos such as the Pataan Nuclear Power Plant in hope to lower electricity bills, the cultural center of the Philippines, expressways, and etc. CCP Shrine for the Arts First Lady Imelda Marcos built CCP to develop and promote arts and culture in the Philippines. It provides performance and exhibition venues for local various and international production programs. On slide 39, we can see here the CCP complex. Its inspiration is Bahay Kubo, the culture center of the Philippines complex, also known as the CCP complex, is an 88 hectare or 220 acre. The cultural center of the Philippines CCP is the premier showcase of the arts in the Philippines. Founded in 1969, the CCP has been producing and presenting music, dance, theater, visual arts, literary, cinematic and design events from the Philippines and all over the world for more than 40 years. Sa Folk Arts Theater, ginanap noong 1974 ang Miss Universe pageant at sa Philippine Inter International Consension Center noong 1976, ginanap ang IMF World Bank Conference kasama na din dito ang tahanang Filipino or Coconut Falas o Papal Visit. At last but not the least ay ang Manila Film Center. Dito ginanap ang Manila International Film Festival. Hi! My name is Sandara. Reviving Filipino Tradition National Arts Center in Mount Makili, Coconut Palace State. Bakit nga ba kailangan nating malaman or muling mabuhay ang ating mga tradisyon? It gives us an irrefutable connection to the past, to certain social values, belief, costumes, and tradition that allow us to identify ourselves with other and deepen our sense of unity, belonging, and national pride. Yes, that is true. Pinag-aaralan natin ito dahil dito nagsimula ang lahat. Kung bakit tayo may paniniwala, may mga tradisyon, at kung bakit tayo iisa at nagsasama-sama. National Arts Center in Mount Makiling was designed by architect Lindy Roxin. It's appropriated the style of vernacular house like Ifugao Fail. The National Arts Center is a building complex in Mount Makiling, Los Baños, Laguna, in the Philippines. And it was established in 1976 by First Lady Imelda Marcos as a heaven for young and aspiring artists. It's a theater is the Tanghalang Maria Makiling or the NAC Center which has an audience capacity of 1,000 people. Dito sa National Arts Center, nagatangal ang Philippine High School for the arts na kung saan dito nila pinapakita ang kanilang iba't ibang talento sa singing at dito din pinapakita ang pagatanghal ng ating kultura, tradisyon at hindi lang Philippine Center ang pwedeng magtanghal dito. Dahil pwede rin dito magtanghal ang iba't ibang aspiring artist na kung saan ipapakita nila ang kanilang talento. At hindi natin pwedeng kalimutan na ang National Art Center ay isa sa kilalang destinasyon ng sa pagtatanghal ng kultura, tradisyon, at ang kanilang sining. The next one will be Coconut Palace. Coconut Palace was designed by architect Francisco Manosca and is utilized indigenous building materials and fashioned the roof to look like a salakot. 
The coconut palace is made of several types of Philippine hardwood, coconut shells, and the specifically engineered coconut lumber. As additional information, Coconut Palace is also known as the Hanang Filipino. It is located in the cultural center of the Philippines complex in Manila, Philippines. During the term of Jeju Marbunay as the Vice President of the Philippines, it was his official residence and principal workplace. Aside from the Coconut Palace, National Arts Center is also a part of reviving Filipino tradition. National Arts Center is located in Mount Makiling, Los Banos, Laguna, and is designed by architect Leandro Loxi. It appropriated the style of vernacular houses like the Tugao Fave.